Ah, g'day everybody, thanks for stopping by. Uh, look, today I thought I'd just knock out a quick review video of the old Brass Monkey 15 litre fridge slash freezer. These are available at a number of different retailers and I think the most common one's gonna be J-Car, which is where I've seen them. I didn't actually pick this one up from J-Car brand new, they are $199, and that $199 seems to be standard across all the different retailers that I've seen. Velcro and JCar is no different, so they had this for 200 bucks. I picked it up for I think I got it for 140 second hand off Facebook. You know, I like to pick up all my stuff second hand, and I've got to tell you, it looks like it's brand new, aside from a couple of little scratches here and there. Uh, she's Mickey Mouse. For those of you who follow the channel, you may know that I've got the draw fridge around the side of the car there, and that's absolutely bloody brilliant as far as like you know, overnighters and stuff like that, a quick getaway. Uh, or just for storing drinks. That's the primary purpose for that fridge is just to have drinks, a few cans of Pepsi in it for myself, and a few bottles of water for the dog and any. But it is only 30 litres and the layout makes it a little bit difficult as far as just using it as, as a standard fridge. The only thing I don't like about that little drawer fridge is it's a little bit inconvenient to pack, specifically because I can't get that door all the way open. Uh, if that was in a different position, if it was somewhere here like this in the back of the car and I could just slide it all the way open, then that might be different. But in my circumstances, it's only really good for sliding some few drinks and stuff like that. I have used it for camping overnight, you know, throwing a few steaks in and stuff like that. But it becomes a little bit of a hassle to get in there and get your drinks, you know, throw a couple of beers in, you got your cans of drink in there, you got your food in there. It just gets a little bit difficult to manage because I've only got that small access space to be able to get in and shuffle things around. I've got a number of other fridges as well that are all still running perfectly fine. Uh, I've got the giant 45 litre, which I, I did a review of uh, you know, when I was starting doing the YouTube thing, so the review's not that great. Uh, but that fridge is still working perfectly fine. Picked that up second hand. I think I paid 250 bucks, 300 bucks for that when I got it back in the day. And I've also got the little Waco, I think it's about a 32 litre. Uh, so that little Waco is the same size as the one that I've got over there in the drawer fridge, but just the layout's that much, uh, I guess, better for camping purposes. Those, those drawer fridges, bloody brilliant. For, for space saving, you can move the compressor around, all that sort of stuff. Uh, but when it comes to you know, accessing and putting things in it, I, I don't think you can beat sort of a chest type uh, fridge for your four wheel drive, which is like this one. Uh, I've seen people with uprights and stuff. Now I've got an upright in the caravan. I went and changed the three way fridge that was in that, the gas uh, 240 and 12 volt fridge that was in that. And I changed it over for a compressor fridge because I just wasn't happy with how the three way was working. Uh, so I've got an upright in the caravan, and it's good. But look, I still come back to, and I still prefer my chest type fridges, just like this one. This is this is what I like. They're simple, but sometimes they're not the easiest things to fit. So with that in mind, I had been keeping an eye out for the smallest compressor fridge that I could find. Now there's a 12 liter one of these, which is a little bit narrower and is made to sit in between your console. Uh, that looks like a good thing. If one of those popped up, I might have grabbed one of those. But I kind of had my eye on the 15. I believe Engels got one as well. I want to say it's somewhere around 13 or 14 litres. I've never actually laid my eyes on those. Now, I'm not talking about the thermoelectric coolers, which do the heating and the cooling. We're talking about a fridge that has an onboard compressor in it. It's much more efficient than your thermoelectric coolers. Now, keeping in mind, this is a relatively short-term review uh, of the fridge so far. I've only had it for about a month. Look, yeah, at the end of the day, it's been doing what it's been required to do, and it's been doing its cooling duties. So that is 20 cans of drink in there. Unfortunately, the way the lid works, as you can see, there's this lip around the outside. When that comes down, you can see that at the back, it's actually going to close up on some of those cans. So if you haven't got the cans, so if you haven't got the cans, I guess, move forward a little bit like that, it will actually stop that lid coming down. I mean, you can't just push it and those cans will roll forward. But you can see there, it still isn't quite sealed. So you've got to get the cans, I guess, just in the right place. And you can't have them right at the front. You can't have them right on the side. You can eventually get 20 cans squared away in there. So that's how many cans we're fitting without the extra lid on top. Having the extra lid just allows you to obviously lie a few cans on their side, like I said, seven. Uh, but if you're going to just put them in like that, you can see what I mean, like there's this extra space here, which is not quite, like you can jam another can in there and push it, 
but it puts a bit of pressure uh, on the outsides here. Yeah, I feel there's a little bit of ice there. Uh, so that's about 13 cans in its standard form, and that's what it would look like with the lid on, the standard lid. Yeah, on the JCAR website and a number of the other websites where they were supplying this collar, which was $39.95, so I went and grabbed this, and still not entirely convinced that was worth the 40 bucks. But it doesn't actually list on any of the websites what the extra capacity this gives you. Now, I have found on somebody's blog uh, that they reckon this is an extra five litres, and realistically, based on this, yeah, possibly. You don't really want to think about it for getting capacity, because, uh, like I said, we only got an extra. <coughs> what did I get? An extra one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I got an extra seven cans in there, so uh, what I say, it held 20, so 13 odd cans in there without the, the lid. So I suppose it's about an extra third capacity, I guess, which is interesting enough. But what this really gives you is the ability to have things standing upright in the fridge. Uh, which you wouldn't otherwise have been able to do. Now that was one thing I was a little bit disappointed about was I guess the dimensions, I think they could have probably wrangled those a little bit better so I could at least fit, maybe have a little bit taller and not as long so I could actually fit a number of cans on top. If you at least stack two cans on top, that would be good. You can't necessarily get three cans all the way back. Uh, you know, you're a can short of going all the way along. You know, it's just a little bit awkward. And you always, it doesn't matter which way you stack things, lay them on the side, stand them up, you always seem to have that little bit of space. Look, and I'm talking from a Keen's perspective. Uh, other things are fine. So when you're packing boxes and stuff like that, when I went shopping the other day, I had this on, had it on freezer, come out, had some prawns and some meat and stuff like that. And I wanted to go off and head over to the other shops. So I just went up, opened this up, dropped the bag straight in, and it fitted. There wasn't a heap of stuff in there, but it fitted in this, and I just walked away, left it, left it obviously run on freezer. I got home, just pull it out. Now that's no different to any other fridge you're going to have, obviously. This is just a convenient little size, and this makes a really nice companion fridge or freezer to work with that drawer fridge that I've got over there. Now, ultimately, that's why I bought it. Okay, so I know people are going to ask me, aside from stashing it with Pepsi cans, which my other fridge is already done. Of course, everybody's going to ask, and that wouldn't be a proper review without giving you a look and they reckon that this lid gives you the ability to slap in a bottle of wine standing up and I've got my doubts to be honest but there's, there's no way <laughs> I'm gonna have another look at that website but I'm pretty sure that they say that this lid gives you the ability to stand a bottle of wine now I'm not a bottle of wine drinker but that's a 750 mil I'm guessing that's a looks like a standard bottle of wine size but you are definitely not closing that with a bottle of wine in it so we're calling bullshit on the bottle of wine let's go with a two litre bottle of milk okay so two litre bottle of milk no go certainly not standing up now these are things like if you're going to use this as a car fridge and this is one of those convenient sizes that people might consider for taking shopping or overnighters or a truck driver, you know, to throw in the cab and, and take away with him and you know, that for lunches and things like that. But a two litre bottle of milk, standard two litre bottle of milk, might be something that he would want to take with him. Um, now he's not, unless he wants to lay it on his side, now that's fraught with its own danger. So you're not fitting a bottle of wine and you're not fitting the two litre milk. And I'm gonna have to say that we're not fitting Two litre bottle of Pepsi either. Okay, so those things are disappointing in themselves because I'm 95% sure that the website said um, that having those, having this extra lid gave you the ability to put a bottle of wine in there. Just chuck that other lid on, just give you a quick look at what that looks like. If you get the replacement lid, what you need to do is just have a look at the sides. So when you open the lid, you want to open up to about that position and then pull it up and these will come straight out. So that's the same on obviously the replacement. So let's just drop this one back on. And it is a good seal. You can see that it really holds down there. So you pull it up in about that position. It's easier if you just turn it on its side and you'll see when that lines up with the hole. Give it a good pull up. And she just pull straight out. The other one. Just line her up. A bit of a push and drop it out. That's what she looks like in standard form. That's the amount of space that you're gaining in the fridge. Now, I'm a bit disappointed in that. I, I really do think that they said that you could get a bottle of wine in there. I'm gonna have a quick Google, hang on. 
So I did find it. So Road Tech Marine, $39.95. It's the same lid. It's a slightly different colour, but it fits. So GH1623, same model number. It says great lid replacement. Adds another five layers to the capacity of the fridge, but importantly, means you can fit a standard bottle of wine standing up inside. Rotec Marine, bullshit, you haven't tried it. So, not real happy about that. I don't drink wine, so, you know, realistically it doesn't matter. The purpose for me was to be able to, you know, get the shopping and stuff when I come home, throw it in there, uh, and again, just to be a little companion freezer to go with that little drawer fridge over there, just to uh, maximize my space. Now, give you a little comparison of size. Here's my little Waco, uh, I think it's a 32 odd liter. From a floor space perspective, everything but height, I would say they are but identical. Now a car fridge is something that I really, really recommend. Once you've had a car fridge and you've gone away from an Esky and carrying ice and all that sort of shit when you go camping, you're never going to go back. I'll tell you that now. Absolutely bloody brilliant. And my fridges tend to live in my cars, running 24/7. You know, it's now running off a lithium battery. Previously, it was AGM. 250 watt solar panel on the top, with the Enerdrive DC DC charger. It's been a number of different DC DC chargers over the years. It's been the projector. Uh, it's been the Matson, and now we're up to the Enerdrive. And the Enerdrive has been the best one thus far. I actually call this the Cool Freeze 35, but I think it's actually only around about 32. So this is the older CF generation. Uh, now this still works fine, it's had a number of thermistors through it, um, and there's a second one already in there uh, in case this next one packs it out. Now Waco's always seem to go through their thermistors, so I'm not really sure, and that's what gives you the control over the temp. Uh, so if it starts freezing, you're up for a thermistor. Now size-wise, like I said, uh, they're pretty much identical as far as width. Lengthwise, they're about the same. The only difference we're really doing here is probably saving around about, call it around about 20 centimeters or something. So for 20 centimeters, in this configuration, in its 15 liter configuration, I'm losing around about 50% capacity over this big boy. I'm still, I'm still not entirely convinced uh, that getting a little 15 liter was a good idea. I'm just shooting some B-roll so you can see the idea of the size of the two of these. I wonder if the reason they've done this with those handles and haven't given you tie down straps is the space saving that you've got over these. You can see on the end there, these are about the same width or length, whichever you want to call it. But it really is the tie down handles on either end that's adding an extra, I don't know, five, six centimeters either side. So that's about 10 centimeters you're, you're adding to the length of that. So obviously if they're going for a compact fridge, not having those on the end, means they can put that cabinet size as a hell of a lot smaller than what that little Dometic is. So lots of reviews coming up on the little brass monkeys and I wanted to get one and I wanted to share it with you guys and I wanted to see what they're about uh, and check them out and do a review. And I thought this might be something you guys might be interested in as well. So the one that I really, really wanted, I think it was a 38 litre and I nearly, I nearly bought it, but uh, it was $400, I think it was 35 litre, and it's an Esky slash fridge, so it works as a fridge, put it in the car, run into the car, all that sort of stuff, plug it into your power, and then you can take it out, and you can get these little lithium batteries, there's a bird up there, you can get the little lithium battery packs that plug into the side, so you can use it out of the car. So if you want to go down to the beach for the day, um, I think you only get several hours out of them, it's not a lot, it might be four or five hours, depending on the battery capacity that you buy, I think they might have been around about four, seven, and maybe 10 or 12 amp hours or something like that. So one of those would be handy for, you know, a few hours, certainly if you went to a party or you went down to the beach for a few hours or something like that, or out for a picnic and you want to take this over the picnic table. A little battery that slaps on the sign. Unfortunately, when I went to have a look, I thought the battery, I saw it and I went, oh, beautiful. This is a really good concept. I really, really like this. And I got to the end of the shop and noticed that the fridges were the 400 odd bucks and then they had the batteries there and I think they started somewhere around about 120 to 150 bucks and went up. And I went, yeah, look, for a novelty thing, that was great, and I thought it was a really good idea. And, uh, you know, if you've got the use case scenario, and it's got a little wheelie trolley and all this sort of stuff, um, I thought it was a really good idea, but the, the, the price of those lithium batteries was just like, no, I'm, I'm just not doing that. Again, I was only, I was, realistically, the reason I went with the Brass Monkey as the extra fridge that I really don't need, um, which is to be able to do a review for it on the channel. 
So I w certainly wasn't going in and spending 400 bucks on a fridge and then plonking another one to two hundred dollars um, on at the lithium battery. It just didn't make sense. And, and again, for, for the novelty and just for the purpose of getting a review, it wasn't going to happen. Uh, compressor wise, it tends to run around about three and a half while it's running if you've got it on high. If you drop it down to eco mode, it tends to drop it around about an amp. You might see about 2.3, 2.5 amps while it's cycling. Obviously, you don't get anything for free. So whether it's cycling at two and a half amps uh, and running for longer, or whether it's cycling at three and a half amps and running for a shorter period of time, ultimately it's still gonna end up probably using the same amount of power. Now those have just been my observations about whether I have it on eco, or whether I have it on max. It's about a, about an amp difference, but I figure it's still got to do that. It's got, still got to do the same amount of cooling, um, so likelihood that it's probably still going to end up crossing about the same amount of power. It does have three settings as far as battery protection go. Unfortunately, the manual, which is a little bit lackluster as well, Brass Monkey, doesn't tell you what those settings are. You've got H1, 2, and 3 and you can choose that just by holding down the set button here on the screen and you can just cycle through one, two and three. Now it does say if you're using it in a car where it's running off the engine then you can have it on set on H3. If you're going to be running it off a battery it suggests H1 or H2. Now it doesn't tell you what those voltages are, you're probably going to have to test for yourself. We'll go down the rabbit hole Alice and go and have a look and see if you can figure it out for yourself. Take a 12 volt or a 24 volt input which is nice and obviously if you are running it off 24 volt, you can basically half those current ratings that we were just talking about. Now the fridge itself is really kind of quiet once it's going. Now what I mean by that is on startup, the compressor does get a little bit of a shake to it, uh, which is a little bit odd because once it starts going, that completely disappears and it becomes basically silent. Now this is gonna sit up beside me, uh, beside the bed more than likely, and I'll show you what that looks like in situation. Uh, but that's where it's going to sit, so it's going to be right beside my head when I'm sleeping in the car and I'm also going to be sleeping on top of that Dometic drawer fridge. So both of these are going to be side by side, doing their thing. And look, realistically, I can sleep under a barbed wire fence in the middle of a storm. Uh, you know, I've got used to sleeping, sitting up in the truck, just putting my head back and away I go. I think you would have to be a very light sleeper for this to bother you, and I don't think it's going to. As far as the settings on the top, it's really straightforward. You've got an up and down. Uh, to choose your temperatures, you've got a set button which allows you to set the eco or max mode just at the a quick press or momentary press uh, and you can hold that set button in to choose your voltage cutoff, H1, 2 or 3 as we talked about earlier. And there's a power button, it's really nice to see a power button on a fridge, that's not something you see very often. Uh, I've got all of mine running through the switch panel that we've got over the back here and it allows me a little bit more control of it. Because this is going to be going through an Anderson plug, it will, once I cut it off and put one on it, um, this will be on a switch over here as well. But I actually need to put another switch in. I'm running out of Anderson plugs and I need one for the road chef. Anyway, we'll get around to that later on. For size wise, you're looking very similar to the little Waco here, which is a 32 litre. This is only 15. If we throw that other lid on, it's going to be even closer. There we go. So in that configuration you can see it's even closer to that. As far as cons, I know that it's really a con for most people. It does come with a cigarette lighter socket and a merit socket uh, on the end of this lead. So it's got a great size lead on it, biggest lead I've ever seen in the fridge. Uh, typically they're around about something like this. You can see the length of that. That's well, I'd say that's probably about two meters. But this one might even be close to five. There's actually a knot in this, I hadn't spotted that before, but you can see how long that lead is. And I think that's probably close to five meters worth of lead. So that's really impressive. So I guess the one disappointing factor about this, and I saw it straight off the bat when I got it and I stuck it in the car. This is a car fridge, right? I meant to go in the back of cars, four wheel drives, that sort of stuff into your truck. Now that's where most people are going to put this. Chances are some people are going to have a nice little spot, little nook or something, little cranny. They can stash this in, push it away, and it's going to be nice and safe and secure. But most of us, the rest of us, the other 97 odd percent of us, 97.5 percent of us, want to strap them down. Now it doesn't have anywhere to strap it down. It's got these nice little handles on the end, but this is just a lip and there is literally nothing on the body of this and it sounds like they might be the same for some of the other ones in this brass monkey range but they don't have any tie down points so there's no way for me to strap this down short of throwing a, a strap over the top of that over the top here 
sort of in between the lid and where the control panel is, I'll strap that down. But obviously that's not ideal. Um, what I am considering is possibly drilling in through here and just tapping on a little eye bolt or something like that, just so I can at least have something holding that down. Cans and that, and that comes open. You've got a lot of projectiles coming your way if you hit the brakes and this thing isn't strapped down. So, brass monkey, you really, really need to put some tie down points on these because these are cartridges. People are going to put them in, they're going to put them in the boot, whatever. Some people aren't going to tie them down, but those with a little bit of common sense are going to want to strap these down to the floor, especially those of us with four wheel drives. This can't be floating around, it just can't. I mean, just look at the. I mean, if we just go over and compare that to our Waco over here and the solid handles that this has got on it. All of them, all of the other fridges that I've seen, without exception, have some sort of handle system that can double up as a tie down system. This is the first fridge that I've ever seen. This is the first car fridge that I've ever seen that doesn't have any way to tie it down. That, I've got to tell you Brass Monkey, and for you guys out there, major, major flaw in the design of this. Um, that, that's, a, that's a deal breaker for a lot of people. It's just going to be. I don't care how you put it, that's a deal breaker. You need to be able to strap your fridge down. And to be making, <laughs> I know I'm banging on about it, but to make a car fridge and not have any way to tie it down, face palm, really. The materials are all good, you know, it wouldn't say it's any different. If anything, it probably feels a little bit more solid than the Waco here. The compressor's reasonably quiet, it's got a little bit of a shutter when it starts up. It seems to be reasonably efficient, it's not running all the time and it takes around about, if I leave it on eco mode, two and a half amps on eco, three and a half amps uh, off eco, it doesn't, doesn't seem to be cycling all the time, really weird, a little bit disappointed in this lid as far as not being able to get a bottle of wine as per the ad to stand up, whether I'll run it in this mode with the lid on it or whether I'll uh, put the old lid back on, I don't know, from size perspective I thought I was going to be saving some floor space on against the the waco 32 or 35 cf that we've got sitting here uh, but i haven't all i've really lost all i've really gained is a little bit of height stick that lid on and that becomes much for muchness but 200 bucks i don't know what a new waco for you know 35 odd liter is going to cost you i'm going to say i'm going to ballpark seven 800 bucks thereabouts plus possibly I'll put that up on the screen just to give you an idea 200 bucks with your lid 240 so it's a really good proposition if a size isn't that important to you but if you're going as but if you're looking at one of these as far as wanting to save some space like I was face palm on my behalf I haven't really saved any space here just want to have a look at this plug Yep, okay, so they're the standard fridge plug. So the good news is for me, um, this one, this massive, massive one, still has that cigarette lighter socket on it. And I've got this one for me Waco here, which I've, this is actually a new one, because I lost my Waco one, but I found it again. Um, so I'm just gonna plug this one in here. Okay, and we're all good. So that's working off the same uh, type of plug. So it's kind of like a standardized fridge plug. So that's working off that just fine. So the big question is, for 200 bucks, would I recommend it? It's a hard call, and the, the one, one thing that has held me back from saying absolutely five stars, go and get yourself one for 200 bucks, no tie down points. Beyond that, I think it's a bloody little ripper. I can't talk to you about longevity, but you've got three years warranty on it. Just not having anywhere to tie it down. Yeah, solid construction. It's a really good handy little size for those that don't want to carry a full size fridge. 15 litres is just an extra handy little something to have. Would have been nice, like you can see. Now on the lid of this, they've missed an opportunity as well. On the top of the little Waco here, that little cutouts for your drinks so that's it that's the brass monkey 15 litre car fridge freezer uh, with the little extension collar on the top for your 49.95 um, gives around about five litres and doesn't doesn't let you stand a 
standard bottle of wine up. I don't know what a standard bottle of wine is. I'm assuming that one for 750 litres is a standard bottle of wine. Now, while you're here, now if you've made it this far, you deserve a little prize. Now, I can't guarantee you that prize, but I can tell you you can go in the drawer for one. She had this little uh, foam cannon sent out to me by M MJJC. MJJC. So they've got reached out and said, look, you know, can we send you a foam cannon for the purpose of review? Uh, so they have done that. We've got all the bits and pieces here in the box. So what I'm going to do in the next week or so is get around to doing this review. We're going to give the <laughs> Pajero a bit of a wash down. What I'm going to do is get around to doing that giveaway uh, for the little Bosch power washer that I had so long ago. I did do a review on that and I'll put a link to that up in the screen if you want to go and have a look at that. Uh, unfortunately this giveaway is only going to be from Australian viewers because it's going to be a large box and I, I'm, you know, I'm just not going to be able to send that overseas. So This seems to be a, quite a nice piece of kit though, I've got to tell you. What I'm going to do is get around to doing the giveaway. On the original video I said once I get to 50,000 views and 1,000 likes or something like that, I do a giveaway. And it was a really slow starter. That video just didn't do anything. And all of a sudden it's taken off and somebody sent me a link the other day uh, or an email the other day saying, hey, where's our bloody giveaway? And you're right, it needs to happen. And thank you to whoever that was. I, I apologize, I can't remember the name. I'm gonna put a little package together of, I don't know whether I should do a little package and do the washer and the foam cannon as one unit or whether I should do a draw and do the washer as prize one and the foam cannon as prize two. Put a comment down in the description which way you reckon I should play that. Should I do it just all as one and do the foam cannon as well as the, as the washer, as one package, or should I break it up? The other thing I'm gonna do and throw in as a consolation prize, because I've still got it in the house there somewhere, is that bloody Chinese throttle controller that I've got. I switched over to the iDrive and I'll do a review of that later on. But I've got that throttle controller um, that I got from China, it cost me about 79 bucks or something. I got my money back because it just jerks all over the place. If somebody's happy to have that and wants to have a play with it, um, you know, we'll throw that in as prize three or something like that. Somebody can have a play with it. They might be able to get it worked better than me. I am still also editing all that footage of that stuff, uh, setting up the lithium batteries. So that is all coming. There's just a mountain of footage that I've just got to pour through. Uh, so hopefully I'll get around to doing that in the next few weeks. Hopefully the next video you're going to see will probably be uh, a review of the MJJC Foam Cannon. The MJJC Foam Cannon Pro. Um, so at this point, I haven't decided whether I'll give this one away or whether I'll give the Foamy away. Uh, I can tell you off the bat, I can tell you straight off the bat that the Foamy is more solid, certainly as far as this goes. But this mechanism on top when I got the foamy, I wanted one that was going to have an adjustable amount of foam here on the top, and this one does, where the foamy didn't. I like the foamy because it's Australian. Yeah, I don't know which way I'm going to go. I really should give something away Australian. Um, not knocking this or anything like that, because the, the quality certainly seems to be there at this, this stage, but um, you know, I like to sort me, to, I, I like to promote my Australian stuff, but when things come my way, um, for the purpose of a review, like something like this. I like to grab them and share them anyway, even if they're not Australian, but I'll always try and focus on Australian stuff where I can, it just doesn't always come my way. Same as last one, just gonna be, stick a comment down in the video and be a subscriber, basically, and uh, we'll do that giveaway, we'll do the little Bosch pressure washer. Again, if you wanna have a look at that one, it's a ripper little unit, it's up in the corner. I need to pull it out of the box because I've been using my other one that they sent me. Um, so I'm gonna pull it out, um, I'll probably even use it with the foam cannon here just to give it a test, make sure everything's still working, give it a bit of a clean up. And then hopefully, all going well, we'll be getting close to our 10,000 subscribers. So it'd be nice, be nice to be able to knock on the uh, 10,000 subscribers there as well, around about the same time. Currently we're around about 8,700 8, or something like that. So if you've got any questions, um, re the little Brass Monkey 15 litre fridge, give me a shout. If you've got anything in particular you want to see about the MJJC Foam Cannon Pro, Put in the comments below and definitely most definitely put in the comments below whether you think i should do the giveaway as whole as bolus as a job lot and just do everything to one person or whether i should do this as a parted giveaway if i do what i could do is do the washer as 
prize one, that's going to have to be domestic. I would probably still do the foam cannon as prize two uh, and probably keep that domestic. Maybe we'll have a look at that. We can find that little throttle controller. Uh, we can do that as an international prize. So at least I get the opportunity for my international viewers because I know there's some guys out there and I really appreciate you. Uh, yeah, shoot in the comments and all that sort of stuff. So we'll try and do something for you guys as well. So that's it guys. Thanks very much for stopping by. That is the review of the little Brass Monkey 15 litre fridge. Uh, keep in mind we've got that little giveaway coming up. And today is my birthday. I'm 47. So happy birthday to me. Thank you for everybody that's come along and uh, enjoying the channel and making comments. I don't always get the chance to get back to you straight away, but I'll do my best. And uh, I really look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers guys.